In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, worldwide, worldwide. we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners just like you. Um, and the way we open the episode is by talking about current events, studies. We talk about our lives. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So let me give you the breakdown of what happened in today's Mind Pump podcast episode. We started by talking about Magic Spoon. This is our favorite kids tasting cereal. It's high in protein, whey protein, very, very low in carbs. I think there's no sugar. So it's like a great it macro. It doesn't even make sense. It's so. a great macro profile, but it comes in flavors like fruity flavors and blueberry and chocolate. Birthday cake, I think they had at one point. Mm, I don't know if they still yes. have that, but it's really, really good. They also have a brand new bowl and spoon that you could buy on their site. So you can look even more awesome as you eat this delicious high protein cereal. Anyway, look, we work with them. We have a discount for you. If you go to the Mind Pump Magic Spoon link, here's where it is. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get an automatic discount applied to your cereal. Don't forget to use the code Mind Pump. Um, then we talk about coffee and leanness. There was a study that showed that women who drank coffee uh, were leaner than women who didn't drink coffee. So it might have some fat burning effects. Kind of interesting. Yay, coffee. Then we talked about Joe Rogan, his move to Spotify, uh, how much Spotify's value went up in the market, what that could potentially mean for the podcast space. That's really cool. Oh, this is big news. Then I talked about how people are using uh, full spectrum hemp oil extracts like Ned to help deal with anxiety and stress of the current situation. Like right now, a lot of people are a little stressed out, uh, feeling a lot of anxiety. Uh, cannabinoids can help bring that down. CBD is one of them. Now, Ned makes full-spectrum hemp oil, okay? So it contains high levels of CBD, but it also contains lots of other compounds that help work with the CBD. So it's a great product to use for feelings of anxiety. Um, and it also has some other benefits like anti-inflammatory benefits. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Go on their website, helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash Mind Pump, and you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then we talked about Apple and Google launching contact tracing software. Uh-oh, that might be a bad thing. Mm. Then we talked about Tesla potentially moving to Tulsa. Let's say that three times fast. Yeah, I like that play on words. Then we talked about Facebook. Now is going to be only asking like 25% of their employees to come into work so everybody else can work at home. That's kind of cool. I talked about a study that talked about how diets really don't matter. Um, it's really about your behaviors, which, which, which you said what? before. Um, we talked about how Chuck E. Cheese is delivering pizza, but not under the name Chuck E. Cheese, so that should they fool you because, you know, Chuck E. Cheese's pizza. It's a guy in a creepy costume. Doesn't taste that good. And then we talked about AI. There's a show on uh, YouTube that Justin loves. I'm obsessed with it. And uh, they did this AI episode that was a little, I think, depressing. Um, <laughs> then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first fitness question. Is there any way to mimic the action of sled pushes at home? So you can drive sleds in the gym. They're great for lower body development. You can modify them for upper body development. What if you don't have a sled? What do you do instead? Next question. This Maybe person, you're dead. This person wears heels and gets knee pain. So they want to know how they can remedy that. So Adam gives all of his tips on how he prevents his knee pain from wearing heels at home when no one's watching. <laughs> the next question. What are some ways to deal with relationship stress while quarantined? with your partner. Of course, we're fitness experts, but we like to talk about relationships too, so we give our input there. And the final question, this person wants to know if there's any topics that we dis that we disagree on completely that we can't come to a conclusion over. So what do we disagree over and why am I always right? Also, wrong. Also, listen, uh we're having our Memorial Day apparel sale. Everything is on massive discount. It's happening right now at the Mind Pump Media page. Go check out all of our apparel. Also, all month long, actually five days left. When this episode airs, there's only five days left for the MAPS Starter 50% off sale. MAPS Starter is a phenomenal workout that'll introduce you to resistance training. So if you want to reap the benefits of resistance training, but you don't have a ton of experience with weights, this is the perfect program. All you need to follow this routine are dumbbells, just a pair of dumbbells, and a physio ball. That's it. And you can do the whole entire workout. Here's how you get the 50% off discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. 
And it's t-shirt time. Ah, shit, Doug, you know it's my favorite time of the week. He's back. He's He's back, yes. Finally. We had one big winner this week. We had zero reviews in Facebook. Wow. And very few in iTunes. So the winner this week for iTunes is Austin Bassett. You are the winner. Send that name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. What's up with that yeah. post you did, bro? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start an unfollow war with you. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> I didn't even Nobody get ugly. I didn't know you were creeping on me like that. On what? On your uh, follows. Oh, it's I mean mm. this it doesn't is, mean anything to you. Oh, it means oh, everything. No, yeah, this doesn't. means everything. That, that's all Adam has. It is. What are you doing? <laughs> that's you know? Yeah. I can't I can't I can't I can't claim I'm the coolest one in the group if I don't even have the most Instagram followers. <laughs> yeah, right. That that's, doesn't make you cool. Cool. No, sure it does. No, it doesn't. Dude. These days, you bro, know, the ask, numbers don't lie. Ask any twelve-year-old. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> who's got the most? <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Immediately, what they ask you. Yeah, exactly. Well, I can't. I can't hang out. Remember with Remember that dude. kid I told you I was playing basketball with? That was like how I was getting drilled. How many YouTube followers? Yeah. How many Twitter followers? How many Instagram followers? And then he said TikTok. And yeah, like, oh, yeah. Oh. And he's like, oh, you oh. lost a yeah, bunch yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. I lost cred. I lost oh, my man. street cred right away. So, so <laughs> with funny. the twelve-year-olds. Yeah, it's a new. It's a new standard. These yeah, days. man. I didn't even know that. I mean. Well, I mean, what are you going to do, you know? I mean, when we started Mind Pump, what did you have? 15, 20,000? Yeah. Was it something like that? I don't remember. It was it was over 10, I know It was that. over 10. You know what's funny? When did it shift I, from people that didn't care? They were the cool ones, right? And now it's like you have to care about having all these followers and shit. It no, doesn't, I don't think we were. I think that's half of how why it does okay for us is yeah, that you don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I, no, I mean like for kids. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, well, it's because it's the only metric they can clearly see and understand. Yeah, you that's, know what I mean. And that's it's an obvious. It's one. just unfortunate. There's, there's in my still, opinion, there's still cool kids that are cool without having to post and try. You know what I'm saying? Like I hope there is, man. Yeah, that's where the whole extra thing came from, right? What do you like mean? From, there's still cool kids. There's still cool kids that don't don't have to like. How do you know? Because I follow all the cool kids. Oh, yeah. So they, they yeah. got like 500 followers. No, like, it's, no, 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 cool. no, no. Yeah. You, I mean, you could still gain followers and not be trying to gain followers. I oh, mean, I it, see. It's, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be. Yeah, there, there's obviously a large, a large portion of people that are. I just think you can tell when people are trying. I just yeah. think it's hilarious how people look at, especially if you're looking at it from a business perspective. They look at their followers and they'd be like, "Oh, I only have, you know, 3,000 followers." Like, if you had a brick and mortar business. And three thousand people. Oh, you're rocking! Came by your store and walked around and looked around. I mean, you would it would you would be incredible. Oh, I, I talk yeah. about this a lot when when I do interviews. Is that you know you if you were to just to spend the time to add value to that you know thousand to three thousand people uh, versus trying to get more people looking at mm-hmm. you. Uh, you'd be far more successful from a business perspective. Yeah. Right? Maybe not a popularity contest because there's people that still look at that and be like, oh, wow, they're famous because they have this many. You know, it's just I, the still, I mean, you you were just talking about how you share with your, your son, right? Mm-hmm. Because his generation looks at YouTube and they think like, oh my God, my dad has got this big YouTube channel. But yet from the business perspective, we look at YouTube as like the, you know, it's an afterthought for us of all the things that we focus on. So enlightening him. So I think as that generation gets older and and more and more people become privy to it, I think they will realize that just because somebody has a ton of followers doesn't mean that they're necessarily that successful. Now, you remember how reluctant I was yeah. to even get on Instagram? Do you remember that? Oh, I had to. Adam, I know. Adam you're, literally. Almost everything we've done, I've had to beat it oh, into you before God. we did it. <laughs> because I hate that kind of stuff. Look, at, look how long it took you to get to Twitter and look at yeah. how you do Instagram now. It's just tweets. Yeah. And you and you got you got more popular. Come yeah. on, guy. I, was, I just I, it's so annoying to me the whole like the whole premise of the whole thing. You know Bro, what it's mean? new business. It's how but, it's done now. But when I when yeah. I you know when I realize I'm helping people, then it really makes a big difference. But yeah, it's like you starting a business forever, and I'm in your buddy. I'm your partner, and I'm like, hey, dude, you, you should yeah, get, get a, a business, website. Get a website and a business <laughs> card, <laughs> guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, get with no. the times. You're like, no, nah, no, nah, I like to talk to yeah. people. No, so I like to write <laughs> actual letters and I put them in the mail with a stamp. Get with the get with the times, Grandpa. Get a get a get a register. Smoke signals no, to my friends. No, I got a, I got a notepad. That's yeah. where I write everything down. <laughs> yeah. It's been working forever that way. Hey, I, did you guys get the email uh, from Magic Spoon the other day? Their new bulls? No. No, I what? didn't see that one. I've been Doug, see if you can pull this up so these guys can see because I brought it up the other day. What do day. you mean bulls? They're selling bulls I just now? ordered yes. some birthday cake. It's like a kit. I, I'm so mad that they didn't send this to us first before. What the, what the fuck's the point of having it? I'm, I'm calling Magic Spoon out right now. What is the point of having partners... And not get the cool shit before everybody else does. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
Well, I they agree keep with supplying that. us with the, you know, every now and then we'll get some some more fruit, fruity, you know, which is great. But uh, I need to try that birthday cake. So I just went and ordered some birthday cake flavor. Yes. Oh, it's not. You can get it still. Yeah, I thought it was just a limited a limited thing they did. So you can still order no, that. Yeah, you can still order. Oh, it, as far know. as I know, there it is. Look, oh, tell me that's not cool. Oh yeah, right. Look wow, that. that is cool. Huh? So it looks like uh, it's kind of like psychedelic yeah, it's looking. A little, kinda. It's a little trippy, iridescent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it's, a, mm. it's a little trippy. Yeah, that's cool. You you kind of you, you kind of think about it, right? How? The fl- the way that they name the flavors, the design, the psychedelic bowl. Yeah, yeah like who's behind this? Well, think like about it, like, like smart stoners. Yeah, yeah, dude, like Toucan Sam and like you know all those things. Like what was the other Lucky Charms? Like these are all like real like psychedelic cartoony kind well, of. Well, is there's no there's research that's done on like the colors and so you know that. Yeah, yeah, that's like it has it, to be bright. Well, it's you know it's it's funny because it's like emulating fruit colors, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that we're, so for us to eat artificial cereal, it's like bright we, colors we, and sweet means safe in nature. Yeah. Right. So, oh, oh, this is bright. That's true. Oh, right? it's sweet. Probably safe. Bitter did, might mean something bad. Did I bring up on the show? I know. I, I know. I think I told you guys. I don't know if I brought this up on the show, but somebody on our our forum posted the uh, blueberries with banana slices in it. Oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, did I talk about that on the show? I don't know if no, I did. You do it? Yeah, you, oh, yeah, you said yes, you did it. I did it. So you did the blueberry cereal and then you banana slices. Yes. Well, now what were? Did you figure out the macros on that with the protein and the carb? Because you got a little bit of extra carbs with the banana. No. The protein from the cereal. No, I. Didn't. I feel like that'd be a pretty complete. It is macro profile. No, it really is because the 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 sugar and the carbs are really low on the magic spoon. So you boost it with the the banana. You get a little. I think two grams of protein extra with a banana. No, it's oh, but do you, do I'm you, going for the taste. That's what the hell yeah. was. Oh yeah, that's, no, that sounds delicious. Do you guys remember when you figured out that you could eat cereal at any time? Do you remember that when you were a kid? <laughs> I remember that I, was like real power. Yeah, that was like know? it was mind blowing to me. You yeah. know, because when you're little, you know, you kind of do it. Your mom, you know, this is for breakfast. Yeah. And so, and I remember, I think I was like eleven or twelve. And I was like, wait a minute, dude, I, that was I'll a pivotal moment. And when you get your driver's license, it's like equal. What do you mean? Uh, being able to uh, eat cereal whenever you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was just it was incredible, and I'd have it for snacks and dinner. And- well, I grew up in a house that we were allowed to do that stuff. It was oh. all over the place, which is probably not a good thing. Did you have like no rules <laughs> yeah. with that? Yeah, we really didn't have rules. It was like what you what was in the cupboards you could eat it didn't matter. It just, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like it was, it was literally it was you know a fin for yourself. Man, your, you must have had like pop tarts. It's, it's it's cereal. It's wild to me that you were you were such a skinny kid. Growing up, you had access to all that stuff all the time. You well, should just move well, like every second. No, no, no. You're getting it wrong, though. Like, we didn't have a lot of food. You know what I'm saying? We had food. So I'm not by no means. <laughs> That's through. why there were no, there was no rules. Yeah. It was yeah, <laughs> It's like, uh, hey, if you can find it, you can yeah, eat it. That's, exa- that's exactly how it works. A, a box of cereal <laughs> would make its way it. into our, our cupboards like once a month. If you're lucky, a box makes its way in there. So you just, if you see it, you devour it. I don't care if it's at <laughs> yeah. midnight. Two right. in the afternoon doesn't matter, and if you don't, opportunity knocks. That's right. If you don't, one of the siblings might get to Did it. Did you yeah. ever make a sandwich yeah. with one slice of bread? You have to cut the slice in half. And make- <laughs> yeah. wow. William, oh, one slice oh, of bread. Oh, I have folded the heel many of times. Oh, oh I hate many dude. of times. I've made a lot of heel sandwiches. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, at our house, that was always what. Right, you you took the heel out, and then by the time it would make its way, and then. On you the just counter, have two, you just there'd have be two, two heels. Yeah, yeah, two heels would last on the counter for a couple days, so that you know you could always you could always rely on a heel sandwich. Dude, you know what I'm saying? This was my mom. My mom yeah. would make it. You know, we we didn't have it quite like that, but you know, my mom <laughs> didn't like it. She always thought it was silly to buy things like like uh like buns for hot dogs. She's like, why do you why it's bread? She just fold your just, <laughs> just fold, fold the, the slice. <laughs> so she put a hot dog. Yeah, you put cheese and the, mustard because all soggy. Yeah, because of the convenience, mom. <laughs> you just fold it. You know what I mean? Yeah, soggy, you, soggy dog. Here you go, buddy. Uh, this is your this is your thing. Oh, or we whatever. did that plenty of times. Yeah, so that's it. T- what, do you, what do you? Are there any other meals that were staples for you when you were a kid? Uh, a lot of mac and cheese. Mm. Um, uh, and I, very much so did I have hot dogs on you know loaves of bread, Dude, bagel Many, bites. Uh, I used oh. to actually make myself cinnamon toast. All the time, because oh, yeah. you know that's like sugar and then uh, a little bit of cinnamon and, and butter. Dude, it was, it was we amazing. Did that, we did that uh, Mexican style, so you did flour tortillas on the stove, got got the tortillas, and then you did butter and cinnamon. There you go. Oh, that's not bad. It's bomb. It's like a it's churro, almost, almost like a churro. I was just gonna say it's yeah. like a it's like a it's like churro. A, it's like a poor man's churro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, wow. Man, get inventive. That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, oh. good time. Hey, dude, I read a study about coffee, Justin. Oh, hey, I'm another I'm one. Did you just read one recently? I did, but this one. this one's a little more positive. This one's pretty good. This one's actually pretty good. They found that women who drank coffee on a reg- on a consistent basis were just leaner than than other women. Interesting. So they associated it with body fat percentage. I'll read what the study actually said. Not just because they were moving more. 
Well, like, that's why. See though. that? Well, yeah. so I, I was going to say, let me yeah. read the study and then All let's right. give our theories. Like, okay? yeah. So the studies found that women aged 20 to 44 who drank two to three cups of coffee per day had the lowest levels of uh, a fat, 3.4% lower than people who did not consume coffee. Among women aged between 45 and 69, so the older they got, mm -hmm. those who drank four or more cups had a had a 4.1% lower body fat percentage. So, yeah. or or sorry, not 4% lower body fat percentage, but 4% lower than the other group. That's different. That's mm -hmm. hardly anything. That's different. Uh, yeah. That's like, that's, but still, they're, they're, they're finding these associations. Yeah, so what's you, your theory on that? Well, my theory is the same thing that I used to say to people that you know read something like that about it, the latest fat burner supplement that came out. And I would explain to them, it's full of stimulants. And so they're, what they're not telling you is they're not teasing out that somebody who has just took you know 300 milligrams of caffeine uh, you know, how wired are you? Yeah. Mm. You know, you're moving, you're you don't want to sit down. Yeah, you're tapping your much. feet, you're moving your hands, you just got more energy. And so it's less about the supplement, what it's doing something inside your body that, you know, burns body fat. What it's doing is it just making you more active. And because you're more active, you burn X amount more calories. Therefore, they can say it might do that. So it fat. might also suppress appetite a little bit. But you know, mm -hmm. they've, they found that, that caffeine uh, does increase. Insulin sensitivity in the body over time. And this is, mm. by the way, this is for people who can tolerate it really well, which I think there's a self-selection bias. I don't think people who drink three cups of coffee every single day are people that have issues with caffeine. I think you kind of rule that out yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I have family members that don't touch coffee because it makes them super anxious. So people who drink that much probably can tolerate it, but they, they do find that it helps with fatty liver Insulin resistance, uh, insulin resistance in the brain, which is a big one, because hmm. they also connect it to better cognitive function. Now, what 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 mechanism is going on there to to, to make that? Like, what is happening with the coffee? That the, is a caffeine pairing to a receptor that I don't understand. What's the what's <laughs> what's 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 happening? Is there a science word in there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I, that doesn't make sense to me. I think it might be the the, the dopamine it has to do with the the way that affects the brain. I actually don't know how, and I don't think they really even know necessarily how it could work but caffeine is a it is a stimulant but it's actually a, 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 a naturally occurring one you see yeah. it in a lot of plants and teas and people have been consuming it for a very very long time so yeah i've watched i mean my grandma's like 97 now 98 actually and uh i mean she's been drinking four five cups of coffee like ever since i've known that's her source of water that's yeah i guess i mean that's just she just constantly is drinking it like throughout the day yeah but it's and then that was back when everybody was saying like how bad coffee was. Yeah. For you. So yeah, that back in those back in those days, studies showed that coffee increased your risk of cancer and mm -hmm. heart disease and all kinds of terrible stuff. But they forgot to separate the fact that coffee smokers, uh, excuse me, coffee drinkers also smoked. Right. That was the big thing. So, so they didn't separate the two of them. Yeah. Obviously, uh -huh. you know that's what's going to end up happening. Dude, there's a lot of uh, a lot of news still coming out about Rogan and his move, and like there's a lot of articles yeah. written about this. I well, know. That's, that's a big deal. It's a huge deal. You figure deal. Uh, Google owns YouTube. You figure Apple, one of the other monsters, and Joe Rogan it, by himself is responsible for millions of people being active on both those platforms. Mm. Yeah. So literally, Spotify acquiring him is a huge for him a huge fuck you to google mm -hmm. and to apple what mm -hmm. even if it wasn't even if that's not his intent that's what it is right mm. so well, I, shame on them for not uh really bolstering their platform and really putting a lot of attention into it so well, it's like well i'm i'm very curious to what we're going to see now bro so i just so gary v said uh you know welcome to the podcast wars right let it which, begin yeah, with this is great. This is what you want in a market, especially if you're in the podcasting space. Let the wars begin. Right. They'll start fighting over, you know, podcasts. This is this was an article from The Verge, and I'm reading a lot of articles like this from analysts. Literally, this is the title. The podcasting world is now Spotify versus everybody else. Yeah. That's how that's how big of a they deal put this their is. Well, that's so how was it when TV started? It was like ABC, NBC, you know, CBS. Like, how did all those networks start? Like, who's the main player? Yeah, the I, th because they were broadcast. Remember, back in those days, it wasn't cable; it was through the air. Uh -huh. And I think it was regulated by the government, so they had only so many channels, and they gave certain ones to certain companies. So I'm not quite <clears throat> sure how that worked out. Now the bandwidth is pretty much. Unlimited, so it's a little bit different, but still, they're gonna, they're, you know, now, calling it a war. Now, what, what's your guys' theories? Because you think of Google and Apple, they're already massive powerhouses. So even though Spotify is is starting to solidify as one of the best, you know, 
uh, you know, audio streaming services mm-hmm. and soon to go after video, you know, they still are small potatoes when you talk about comparing them to Google and Apple. Mm-hmm. Do they flinch? Do they start getting involved in the wars and start acquiring people and offering contracts? Or do they let Spotify do all this work and then eventually one of those companies come and swoop them up? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe you know. You, okay, so we talked about this when it, when it came to streaming. Remember a, a, a while ago, and we were speculating of what's going to happen. Is the biggest streaming company just going to purchase the other streaming companies? But instead, what we found is more competition. Yeah. We're seeing you know Disney and Hulu and Netflix and you know Amazon's coming up with their own content. I think you're probably going to see something like that with podcast space, where it's proving itself as its own platform, its its own worth. So I, w- I would imagine more companies, even like a Facebook or somebody, might start thinking about, oh, why don't we have yeah. a, a podcast platform? Yeah, because look at how the streaming video uh, companies compete. It's not that they which company has the best, you know, movies that are you know mainstream. It's which one is producing their own unique content. So that I feel like might happen where Spotify will will produce their own podcasts and content and Apple will produce their own and mm-hmm. you know other companies will produce their own. Oh, I don't think that. You don't think so? No, I think that's too much work and effort for them. I mean, why would you do that when you, we are we are setting them all up to make it easy for them? We're all fighting over airtime and and rankings and getting bigger and better and then you see a company that has mo- money that will th- they they can do the calculations, they can figure out Joe's getting this much attention. He does this much in advertising, therefore it's valued at mm. this. Let's make him an offer. Yeah, maybe the first year he's he's coming out on that offer the most. Over the course of two or three years, you know, we will win in the amount. And I just figure that they're, they're going to start doing that. They'll start acquiring people that are podcasting. I think the big ones are going to be the the slowest to start, you know, acquiring shows and, and and really doing like like strategy in terms of like trying to occupy content. Uh, I, I see like a Pandora or like these other competing services really trying to kind of follow suit to Spotify initially, and then that's going to be a thing, and then the big ones will come the, in. The later. market likes it. Did you guys see what happened to Spotify? Oh, ju- yeah. Oh, went through the roof. Five yeah. bill. They increased their value on the market over five billion. Crazy. Now, what I don't know, and maybe Doug could look this up, is I believe the last time I looked up Spotify, they're technically still not profitable. Check that out, Doug. Let me know if if, if Spotify is crazy. is 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 a pro- so well, I mean that's it's so hard to tell now. It's the I model know. with tech companies. Yeah, tech right? companies do that. Yeah. Well, it's- remember Facebook? Facebook hit the market. It wasn't profitable when it first hit the market. Now it's an extremely profitable company. I think the way they look at it is they look at how many users are on there, how, what the potential influence right. is. Right. Yeah. Have it's once, cornered the market. Yeah. Once you collect that, let's see, loss making Spotify will continue to put growth ahead of profit. Yeah. See, <laughs> their their goal is to continue to grow. And okay, they have never post. They have never posted an annual net. Profit. And yet, they're, what are their shares at right now? One hundred eighty something dollars. That's so wild. I know, right? With no profit. Yeah, it's, no. it's insane. Well, I mean, but I mean, that's the model. Is Rogan going to be worth it? That, I mean, there the people are speculating that he made it was a hundred million dollar deal. I think it was way more than that. Yeah, it was. Way I've more heard two hundred and fifty. Yeah. 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 yeah, I yeah. think it was way more than that. Which, yeah, I don't remember where I read that, but yeah, I think it was a big chunk. Well, for sure. Forbes says that uh, that Rogan has a two hundred plus million fans. How do they calculate he has two hundred million? Pl- well, he has one hundred and ninety million downloads a month. Mm. So they they figure that he probably averages about two hundred million fans. That's a lot. Well, yeah. we know that we've talked about was this. Just on Apple we've talked podcast. about this before with our own audience and, and looking at the, the scale of the business and based off of downloads, like it's not a great representation of actually how many people mm-hmm. are impacting. How many people listen to I mean, we all know everybody in this room, obviously are podcast listeners, but there's times where I go months and not listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can't be the only person that's like this. You come in waves. You know, sometimes you're you're yeah. on it and you're listening to it every day, multiple times a day. Other times you're taking days off. So just the total downloads in a month doesn't give you a clear picture of actual actual users that are coming in and out of your business. See, well, okay, being, so, okay, so here's the deal. You and I have been going back and forth as to whether or not they owned Joe Rogan's sponsorships. Yes. And I still am not 100% sure. I have yet to read that that's exactly what's happening. Here's what Forbes says. Forbes says that Spotify is clearly betting that Joe Rogan's fans love him enough to follow him to Spotify and then produce a halo effect on other podcasts on Spotify, which it can then use to sell memberships and ads. I don't think they own his sponsors. I think you just, they said, just, you just you just said it yourself. Membership no, no, and ads. No, which is okay. The halo effect meaning 
he's going to draw so many people over because what they... I'm not denying that. I agree with you there. That's not enough, though. Really? Yes, that's not enough. Wow. Yeah, you're, and they just mm. said it right there. That the, the Halo effect, bring them all in there and be able to sell ads yeah. on him. They're not going to be able... They're, you're not gonna, he's, they're not going to allow him to have you know 30 sponsors that he's getting paid for and no Spotify makes no money off of it and then in addition to that also do more ads on it. So you it's don't so, think it was just him bringing people over? No. You it's think not. it's more than that? I think it's more than that. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you get a deal that massive is it's not just the users that they're hoping are going they're going to acquire and hoping that are going to go to the $9 a month subscription. That's a yeah. big chunk that's what probably makes it easier to mm -hmm. justify $200 million. But the other piece is that they now have him on that platform. They will allow. They'll do. They're, they're a network, so they'll go, and they'll go after m even bigger companies. Right. Right now, we see a lot of small small businesses are 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 becoming savvy to the how good of a medium that podcasting is. They're they're setting the table to go after the Coca Colas and the massive yeah. massive companies that are not. Well, along those lines, you want to hear something crazy? So uh, on this Forbes article, they talked about uh, podcast ad revenue in the U.S. alone. So this isn't even the world. What year did we start our podcast? Was it two thousand five years ago? So okay, so, fifteen. So two thousand fifteen, when we started Mind Pump, U.S. podcast ad revenues were one hundred and five million dollars. Okay, that was total in the whole U.S. That's it? $105 million in 2015. Do you know what it's going to hit in 2021? So a if it was billion. Wow. Whoa. A billion dollars in 2021. So 2020 is bringing in- Yeah, so Man. 2020 is bringing in $860 million, and they project it to be over a billion by 2021. So that's just from 2015 to 2021. What yeah, that's a, a massive difference. Jump. That is insane. So now with a billion dollars in ad revenue being thrown around to in podcast, you know, that's by the way, you know, for the listeners, that's not like spread out over all the podcasts. There's 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 a there's a small percentage that it's are getting all 80, that 80 20 rule. Yeah. yeah. 80 yeah, 20 yeah. rule so for 20% of the podcast, maybe even less. I, I tell you what, and and for those that are podcasters that are getting into the advertising space, it's it's the wild wild west and there's a lot of companies taking wild advantage wild taking advantage of podcasters right mm -hmm. now. There's this this ridiculous idea that there is a formula for how you should get paid based off of CPMs, and I which think, is just based off downloads. Yeah, which is comical to me because it shouldn't. There shouldn't be a standardized. Oh, you know, everybody gets paid this much, and you know, so a little insight on our business. That was something that you know we refused that, and we could have taken on sponsors earlier on in the podcast and started to generate a little bit of money. Uh, and it was very tempting because we weren't making hardly any money back then, uh, but we refused to do that. And because of that, it's paid off very well for us now that we negotiate every contract. We don't follow any of the CPM rules, and we also have the partners that we want to work with. So yeah, we're pretty picky. Too. So yeah. I, you know, I, I urge any yeah. podcasters that that listen to this show that are to trying to grow their podcast and they want to try and make advertising money, you know, hold out for what you really want and don't jump on something right away just because you weren't making money and now you can make money. You'll make more money in the long run if you take your time and slowly like, yeah. you know, negotiate contracts and wait. Well, I promise. well, now that we're talking about billions of dollars in total revenue, you're, I think you're going to see major brands really start. Spotify, I think this is the that beginning of that. has to perk up some attention from, totally. the, from the big dogs. Uh, especially when they realize the, the, how much power podcasts have in terms of, you know, conversion. Speaking right. of sponsors... The messages that I've been getting from uh, our listeners who use Ned, the the hemp oil, mm -hmm. is just it, it's just it's going through the roof. It's yeah, incredible. Yeah. It's really and, and, and it makes sense, right? Uh, right now, right? It makes sense, man. It's such a it's stressful time, big time stressful time for a lot of people. I was just talking to Jessica about this yesterday, and we're fine. Everybody's healthy, but you know, sh you, you, a lot of stores in California here, at least, mm -hmm. still closed. It's weird when you walk around outside, especially if you live in a city. You see a lot of masks. You're doing small gatherings. If you do any gatherings at all, mm -hmm. kids are stuck at home. So it's just a, a total change in life. And then, of course, every five seconds we're reminded to be scared, which is annoying. Yeah. Every five seconds. Like we're driving and you see signs on the freeway, you know, be careful, wash your hands, COVID-19. Then you drive into the five minutes. You know, don't get to, you know, 
keep gathering small COVID-19 it's like oh it's subtle you don't realize how much of that you're taking in constantly and Courtney and I were talking about this and I was trying to get her to, to start taking it again and what a massive difference it made for her especially in her sleep because like sleep uh it has been rough lately uh between the two of us and and we we're trying to figure out because we're wearing the blue blockers we're trying to do all this stuff but you know like she was taking Ned pretty consistently and, and had much better sleep because of all that. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to get my mom to use it in replace of smoking so so my mom's been an off and on smoker like her whole life and she's a stress smoker. You know, rough day at work or a little bickering going on between her and her husband or one of her kids driving her crazy and then she breaks and then she goes and has a cigarette and I'm like, "Mom, like instead of that, you know, when you're on your streak of staying away from it and you get those moments of feeling stressed or anxiety like that, try this." So I literally just gave it to her this weekend, so I'll report back on how that's working out for my mom. Now, I know there's no real benefits to uh, what's going on with CBD and actually, you know, uh, cigarettes, mm -hmm. but I do know why my mom tends to lean towards smoking. And if I can just get her to Give change- Give her that physical release. Right. Yeah, exactly. If I can get her to change that behavior, it may help with that. So that's kind of how I'm having That's what it use. is. It's not going to fix your problems for you, but <laughs> it, it, it does change the physical response. Mm -hmm. And there's a feedback loop in the body where my thoughts can make my body feel stressed and tense. Then the feeling that my body now has then feeds back into my thoughts. This is how anti-anxiety, you know, herbs and plants and even medications work is they change the physical response. And that feedback can then come back to you and be like, well, you know, things haven't changed, but I don't feel the physical effects of stress. Mm -hmm. So I think it can bring it down a little bit because when they're both active, it just feeds it. It feeds it over. It's like you ever, you ever, you know, you get paranoid and then your heart's beating and you get paranoid about your heart beating fast. Yeah, yeah. And then that makes you more paranoid. Uh, and so it ramps it up even more. Yeah. So the feedback I'm getting is just people are like, man, I, you know, I don't normally suffer from anxiety. <clears throat> But because of what's going on, I've just been tense and stressed. Yeah. I've been using this during the day. It makes me I feel a lot better. I'm a better parent because I don't feel so stressed out. I can make better decisions. So I'm glad that there's something like that out there. For you me. know, back to the our talks about these big companies, Apple and Google. Did you see that they officially launched their their contact uh, tracking uh, software? So people what do you mean? for COVID. Oh yeah, and there's already like three. Uh, there's already three. I think states that are on board that are using it now, uh, and that they're they're predicting that everybody will be on it now. To where you so can, what does it do exactly? It's like it shows you hotspots and everything. Yeah, or? I think that's what how it works. I'm honestly I'm not familiar with the software. I haven't gone in it. Huh. I just saw the announcement that it's official that both Apple and Google have got it out there, and just so you know where people are that actually have it, and so yeah. it'll actually uh, track them for you. So <sighs> if you're heading into a town and you're you know you know worried that there might be lots of people. In the area, or but it's in your not specific. It's not going to be like you walk up to someone, and be like, "Oh shit," you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're, no, you're I, on a date. I'm, just, I, just, I assume it's linked to their phone somehow. I don't know how it works, yeah. but if it, we can track where our phones are at all times. So I would think that you know yeah. the, the same. But way. I don't think it's going to share like specifically. Like you're walking and you say, oh, "There's like, someone like individuals." Right there. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I hope not. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't just know. show like a map of red spots or whatever. Yeah, I, I hope. I hope so. Yeah. But I, mean, I like that. If they do it right, I like that. It gives you a little bit more information yeah, education awareness you make some decisions for yourself you know a little bit better but the whole fear thing right now is just out of control man every uh, yeah. every other thing i read every other article it's like ah oh, stop that's well enough. on the positive note did, did you see now like uh with tesla how uh tulsa is really trying to, to oh, get oklahoma yeah oklahoma is trying to get them to move there for the giga factory for the for the uh, tesla truck the oh, cyber wow. truck uh production that between them and I, I don't know if it's austin texas somewhere in texas is is the other spot but uh they actually painted like one of the iron worker statues all tesla out and gold and everything you <laughs> like, know what i trying to get his business i didn't even think about that like if you were a state would it be wouldn't it would it not be advantageous for you to actually offer them like a facility for free or land for free they do that something all the time. yeah do they, they do all yeah. the time i did not know they're that. trying to woo right oh, now oh yeah so all the I'm time sure. uh when um god what was what's his name oh what a great place to be as far as leverage bro, if you're bro, here bro tesla ted, tulsa i mean i, I love that plan words already that's, that states have been doing that forever so ted cruz uh senator from uh from texas i did not know that they would do this they would actually uh do ad they would put up ads and they would talk to big companies and say mm. hey if you come here You'll pay this much less in taxes, or we'll give you this, or you'll have this opportunity to lure companies over to provide 
more work and jobs. And, yeah, no, yeah. it makes total sense. When Absolutely. Like someone like Tesla or Amazon who employs tens of thousands of people yeah. to get them to come to an area where maybe it's slow, Bro, the economy is slow. One reason why Hollywood, it. This is why one reason why Hollywood has been losing business for so long is people aren't want to film there because the taxes and the costs and all that stuff. Yeah. They'll film all it the overseas. Old regulations. Yes. Yeah. No, this is this is something that's been happening for for a oh, long time. Interesting. Why, I did it's, not know that. It's one reason why California is continuously bleeding yeah. losing people. Losing we're, business. California never did that before. We were a growing a, co- a growing population all the time, but now we're losing people to states like Texas. I think is one of the one. North Carolina, I think, is another one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Can't remember where else. Do you uh, see? Do you guys see that Facebook is reducing their their space down to like twenty five percent? Their actual like brick and mortar, like people coming into the office. So, so they're just keep most one, of them yeah home. one fourth right off the right off the top. Wow. Yeah. So we talked about Twitter staying at home now. Facebook. It's going to be really interesting how that changes the. I landscape. think that's better. Oh. I, I think it's better if because that it, reduces traffic. Still, like that's the one thing—the positive oh, shining even, light. I didn't even think about that actually. Oh yeah, dude, because oh. it's been it's been crazy. Like the amount of traffic buildup over the last like two three years, man. I've noticed just my commute. Wow, what if we do see that over here? We'll notice that more than anybody. I would I think. Hope. We have so many of the tech companies right here as in our hub. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we actually never go back to how bad the traffic was. Just. Six months people ago, people can just stay and do their work from home. Yeah, because I, they're not, I, I mean, my brother-in-law's company. You you hear Twitter, you see Facebook now. I'm hearing the same rumors from Google and stuff. If a lot of these companies now allow even just half their workers or quarter of their workers oh, yeah. to work from home and not have to come in the office, that would make a huge difference on traffic. I would love that because one of the, the the good sides about what's been happening is yeah. it takes me ten minutes to get to work. Dude, oh. I'm trying to focus on that. Yeah, like oh, it's such a benefit to it. We yeah. drove home from from Tahoe yesterday and commuted hours and yeah. never hit traffic. I no. mean, yeah. we had like a little slow spot for like 10 minutes, if that, but we blew home yeah. yep, yep. right at five o'clock, right in the worst part too, going also, through sack. Also think about it this way for the consumer. Uh, so obviously also probably cool for the workers. They get to stay at home. Yeah. We talked about traffic, but now think about it as a consumer who buys products. Do you think Facebook's going to save money by not having to have all these offices? Of course. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Now those savings get passed on Invested back into the company. And, and not only that, but now companies will be competing. Because how, how do companies compete? They offer better services for lower prices. If more people work at home and companies have to spend less money on offices, then the consumer is going to benefit. So one of the the, the the potential good side effects of all this is just more efficiency, more efficiency. In fact, that's typically what happens with economic downturns is companies learn to become more efficient. Yeah, yeah and they then tighten they, up. See, my theory, though, we might see a peak and then a drop because I think that initially everybody thinks that's a great idea and they want to do that. But personally, you know, it would seem like a little cool vacation after a while, but some people just were not made to work from home. Yeah. And I think more people were not made to work from home than others. I think most people... Do better because they have structure. Like separate. Yeah, they have structure. They have a place that they come to work. They know when they get there. They have the pressures of everybody else working around mm-hmm. them. You know, now it, that's a lot of responsibility on the individual to get up on time, start your shit, not get distracted, and go watch TV or yeah. do other things. And so maybe we see this initial like, oh, it's so great, and then we see this kind of drop off after a while. Well, if they keep that as an option, it'd be nice to have you know both options. Like you could come in or you could stay home, and then you know there's meetings and stuff. You gotta. <sighs> Ten, but for I the think, most part, stay home I if think you want. The more I think about it, the more I think it might be a good thing. I think people might adapt, of course, because you want to be around adults and stuff, so they'll figure that kind of stuff. But think about how many parents have to bring their kids to daycare. Yes, have to do now. They how can kind of money that costs. work throughout the day. They can work from home. They can, you know, there it, it. It might actually be overall a good thing for families. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you think, but then I can think of the opposite. I could also think, wow, you're, now your work is no separate, not separated from home. Right. And you're just doing it all Lots the time. Lots of more Did, You know, we, we talked about the the Zoom call that we had with the Z-Biotic, the whole competition and those two guys. Did, yeah. we, did you talk about, did we bring up like how smart I thought that was that they did? The, oh, how, yeah. We didn't talk about how that. How they catered to, uh, I mean, how really, I love, um, I but, love when we meet people that are, you know, big Mind Pump fans and listeners. They've been listening listening since almost the beginning. We did this whole thing with Zbiotic where we did a giveaway and then we did a Zoom call with them and we were talking. And I was just really impressed with both these guys and the way they're operating their business. And one of the things that I thought was brilliant was 
you know, they know that there's a lot of parents that are stuck at home with their kids right now. So they rolled out this whole kids thing. Mm -hmm. They rolled out a kids program to help these parents to to take them do something active. And you got to think, I know personally, I know a it's lot. Like PE, of, yeah, yeah, a lot of parents right now are going insane that weren't used to having their kids at home and schooling them all day long. How good do you feel if you have an, an option from your your gym or your trainer now all of a sudden is offering these fitness classes mm -hmm. for your kids? Not only are you doing something positive for them, keeping them active, but in addition to that, you're giving yourself a break for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think they did yeah, a really real good smart. job, you know, because the gyms are getting hit, have gotten hit really, really hard. I think that was a really smart way to just provide more value or continue to provide value uh -huh. to your people. And, you know, again, I think, you know, when stuff like this happens, you, you tend to come out the other end with more efficient, smarter businesses. A lot of people get hurt, of course. But some of them come out, you know, better off or whatever. Yeah. So, hey, a uh, uh, cool study on diets, by the way, which kind of confirms what we've been saying all along. They did this broad study on lots of different diets, low carb, higher carb, you know, zone, the DASH diet, you know, all these different types of diets. And what they found was that they all produced right around the same amount of, of fat loss, all of them. And that all of them pretty much stopped working after about a year. So in other words, people lost weight on all of them. But after about a year, everybody stopped following the diet and then gained the weight back. So this highlights that it's really not as – so what's really more important about than, you know, for helping you lose weight and keep it off is not so much, you know, the structured, you know, I'm on low carb, I'm on paleo or whatever, but rather the behaviors that surround food. Mm -hmm. That's more important because you stick to a diet that's structured and if you don't change what drove you to eat wrong in the first place – um, then eventually that wins, mm -hmm. and a year later you gain the weight back. I got some funny food news for you guys. So there is a a pizza company that is popping up all over your you know DoorDash, Uber Eats. That's come that's like making waves right now, and it's called Pasulas or something. Doug, uh, 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 can you pronounce that probably? Oh, Pasulas Pizza or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Okay, so it's popping up all over the place, and it's actually Chuck E. Cheese. It's just Chuck E. Cheese delivering pizza. <laughs> In disguise? Yeah, and I think because Chuck E. Cheese is not known for having great pizza necessarily, right? Yeah. They're, they're known for the environment for kids. So they changed the name? So they changed the name. Their delivery service is this like Paxula's Pizza or some shit. <laughs> But and I just come up with a weird like a, Italian name. No, it, I think it's really it's very clever that they did that. Pasquale's? Yeah, Pasquale's. Is that how you yeah, pronounce it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it's, hilarious. But it's popping up all I think I saw it pop up on mine and I never I was like, where's this pizza? Dude, place I tell you what, from? you know, think now that <laughs> I think about it. Do. If you played in the in the in the balls uh at Chuck E. Cheese a lot, you probably are immune to coronavirus. I would, I, I would think so. <laughs> you built up a real serious been immune exposed system. to literally everything. Do you remember that? You jump in that thing. I had the kids sticking it in their mouth and shit. Yeah, just blow. On their nose. Yeah, I mean, what, what do they do? Like occasionally Lysol it, you know, the top of them, you know, if that. There's nothing, it's like, come on. Yeah, there's they, nothing yeah, you can they do. They ain't doing that, bro. <laughs> they, I was just hoping they, they look at that. it like, oh, at least at least 50 kids today sucked on those balls. They're uh, somewhat clean. Dude, when I was a kid. <laughs> runny noses and bleh. Oh, yeah, dude. When I was a kid, my cousin and I were grew up together. It's so like best buds. And we were like eight years old and we were at Chuck E. Cheese and we went and played in the balls. And then there were these yeah. other two boys that were kind of our age. Does this ever happen to you? You get in a rumble in the balls with your with your oh, yeah. and you got your buddy. Yeah, Whoa! Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, wait, wait. It gets real. He started. One kid started messing with him. He started wrestling yeah. with him. The other kid jumps in. Next thing you know, my cousin and I are like, we're driving these kids down deep into the yeah. balls. Yeah, we're not yeah, letting yeah. them up. Drowning we're, them in balls. Oh yeah, we're yeah. holding them down there. That sounds bad, but it's we're, true. It's I, true. I remember the first time that I came back to Chuck E. Cheese as an adult. You know, it had been like a decade or two in between. And I remember thinking, like, dude, this was. I thought these were massive. When you're a kid, it just shows you like yeah, how it different. Looks big. Oh, it just yeah, it felt huge when you're a kid. And you come in, you're like, this is like a little tiny pizza parlor. Yeah. yeah. But the way they had the rooms all set up as a kid, you think it's massive. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I just remember I was that kid that like totally like would punch the uh the, the guy in the suit, you know, in the in the mouse suit, like yeah. <laughs> punch him right in the balls. Like, <laughs> like come on, man. Like yeah. I, I was thinking, like, oh, what a little shit I was. Yeah, you know, terrible for kid. that stuff. Yeah, the mechanic. What about the me the yeah. mechanized? You know, when they play the music, <laughs> creepy. Yeah, there's nothing fun about oh, that. Oh, super creepy, <laughs> dude. You guys know I've I've been talking a lot about like the the, the whole artificial intelligence and you know that show and all this stuff yeah but okay so it's all positive like oh we're moving so far forward and everything
thing. Well, not really. Okay. So they they are trying to like make advancements in terms of like creativity and like art, music, and uh, you know. So anyway, they have one called Benjamin AI, which uh, actually writes screenplays. Oh. And it's like they just feed it maybe like a couple thousand uh, uh, scripts. And then it basically, it goes through all of it, finds patterns, and then shoots out its own kind of script. And it, it is the most, like, idiotic, like, it makes no sense. But, but okay, so this director thought that, you know, it would be a good idea to, like, try and have actors act all this stuff out that it just spits out. And it's it's the, the, the most awful thing I've ever seen. Dude, I saw this one. So they feed it tons and tons of screenplays. Yeah. And then what the AI does- Well, they pick it, a genre first. Yeah. So they so, pick a genre. They're going to do an action, action movie. Or yeah, they do like an that. action movie. So they feed it with like a thousand action sc- And then w- what the AI does is it tries to pick up you know patterns and match words that tend to follow other words. Yeah. Spits out its own full screenplay. And then this director tried to have people act it out. Bro, and, and he's nonsense. all excited about it. Like, oh my God, what is Benjamin going to do today? It's like, dude, I. it actually makes me happy that, that machines suck so bad at that. You know, it's like humans do still have an advantage. <laughs> what are you, you going to do when they don't? Then we're yeah. fucked. When AI it's, makes the best movies. You, you know, think that's possible? Yeah. I mean, we already use algorithms to create movies. Mm. You already see that right now. I mean, that, that's part of what I think it kind of sucks. Well, based about. on what the consumer likes. Right. Yeah. I mean, that. Uh, uh, it reminded me of the, the book Hitmakers. And Hitmakers talks about this, like that we've been doing this since like the 30s. Like we've found patterns in sounds. We found patterns in, in plays and movies that people like. And so... A lot of the, you know, you know, quote unquote, creative artists today aren't so creative. What they do is they look back at think common themes and types of. Yeah, it still requires, though, a level of creativity. Like you could tell me the formula. I'm not going to be able to create, you know, music and art like a lot of these people are, are going to be able to. Makes me makes me wonder, though, in the future when AI is you know more self-aware and it's creating this kind of stuff and will humans not buy it on purpose because it'd be like, nah, that's not that's made by a machine. Yeah. And then dude. they'll be discriminating, you know? Totally. Be like robot discrimination laws. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well it kind of reminds me of the same thing that we talked about with like human 3D printing. Like once everybody has access to print anything they want, I still think that the artist will there'll still be a lot of value in that, right? Because it that's what will make it so unique. Yeah. Like everybody can print a pair of shoes. Cool. But then this guy creates a pair that are so unique and different, like to get his patent or to get yeah. his 3D whatever code to be able to print it, you'll have to pay big money. So I, I do see that happening. Yeah, well, look at music, right? Music, you used to buy albums. They would, they would release a single, but oftentimes you'd have to buy a whole album. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, music is so decentralized, at least in comparison to how it was before, that the way artists now are making a lot of the money isn't necessarily through music anymore or selling it, it's more through the concerts. Yeah. So it's like it went and back. Merch and everything. Yeah, it's Yeah, funny. so it's like it's going back in time where now the value is I see you live, whereas the music I could get it free online if I want. I could listen to it on yeah, and YouTube. you can continuously sell to them through your website and all that. But yeah, yeah. It's yeah. different. So it might do that, Adam, where everybody has can get print whatever clothing and whatever they want, but, oh, I got to go see the actual person make it for me, hmm. and that provides more value. Hmm. First question is from Gimme Cashews. Is there any way to mimic the action of sled pushes at home? Oh, that is a cool one. Yeah, put oh, your car yeah. in neutral, push it down the street. Yeah, that's one method. <laughs> actually, sure. That's actually, yeah, I, I, you could. I didn't even think about that. That's you actually really good. You got to have somebody in there st- steering the car. Make sure you don't push it on its own because you can have yeah, a real bad. The, the risk factor goes up just a little bit it's with bad. that. But uh, I think, too, if you've ever seen those moving slides that you put under couches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you put your hands on those and you kind of lock out your elbows and you get it down into like the. Uh, the beast position, you could actually just kind of push your way forward and and get a similar effect. Oh, that works pretty well. You know what else I was thinking about? We've been talking so much about the benefits of uh, isometric exercises is getting to a wall and driving into a wall. Mm -hmm. So you're mimicking pushing a sledge. You ain't going anywhere. Um, I think that's a cool way to actually create a a cool exercise that probably a lot of people don't do. So Mm -hmm. another thing you can do, it's similar to a sled push, but you're not, you're actually kind of pulling is you could get a strap. These are easy to get tie it around your waist, tie it around a couple heavy plates, do this on some grass and then pull the plates behind you. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard to find, you know, like a tie down strap or whatever, something that's not going to, you know, dig into your skin, put it around your waist, put around the plates. You're on grass, so you're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to ruin the, the weights. And then, you know, put a couple plates on there and just 
and just drive and just walk. Yeah, actually, I just remembered we had an old YouTube video where I was like, I had one of those ab rollers and I was doing that, uh, basically like doing a bear crawl. With, oh, we did that? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember with, that. With, with the ab uh, wheel, which is really difficult. You know, we want to know it's a nasty exercise with an ab wheel. Hold on to an ab wheel, stabilize yourself, have your friend hold your legs like a wheelbarrow. Oh, God. And have them pull. <laughs> Have them pull, not push, but pull. So you're just. Uh, that sounds like a challenge. You got to keep your core tight the whole time. You know the thing I love about sled pushes, and I didn't do. I, I never did these a lot um, oh, in I my career. I, I didn't do them a lot until I met Justin, and Justin, you know, we all worked out together once and or a couple times, and Justin always would include some kind of exercise that you know Adam and I was weren't super familiar. Yeah, unconventional with doing, stuff. Yeah, and I remember doing the sled and feeling good afterwards. I had this great feeling in my body. Part of the benefits of the sled is the fact that there's no negative portion to the rep. Now, negative, the negative portion of a rep is great for muscle growth. It's great for strength, all this other stuff. So it's not bad, but one of the detriments is it does cause a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. When you're just focusing on the positive, you can add a lot more volume with and get strength gains without causing so much soreness so yeah you can control your body a lot more too it provides a lot safer way to really like express that 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 muscle tension yeah and so I, I just love adding them to almost any leg workout i can add them or sometimes i'll add them to an upper body exercise where i'm getting into a position of pushing then I explode with the sled push and then continue so this has now become a, a an exercise i never did before mm -hmm. That is now made into irregular Two rotation. of the most underrated exercises, in my opinion, farmer walk and the sled push. Oh, I mean, for those two, our sled pull for for that matter. I think that they're just they're so like uh, easily accessible for anybody to do, and and you know, regardless of what kind of variables and limitations you have, uh, those two exercises will definitely uh, be great to add into your routine. Absolutely. Well, I know it's trendy to say functional, but it's there's such functional movements. Totally, right? yeah. I think that's. It. I know DeFranco, who's one of the best trainers you'll find anywhere, and is ex excellent with athletes. He like that was his thing. He used a lot of sleds with athletes. Yeah, got a lot of cris criticism because they said, "Oh, that's going to slow them down because you're obviously not running fast." Mm -hmm. And he says, "No, it makes them faster." And then, of course, sure enough, he was totally right. It does make them a lot faster. It's a very functional movement. It's one of the more functional movements you could do that has so much carry over to your regular life, especially if you play sports. Next question is from Inspire Create Rain. I wear heels sometimes, but they aggra aggravate my knees. Is there a certain muscle issue or a problem I have right now that would cause such problems? Oh, Just, yeah. Justin, what do you do from yeah, all the heel wearing so, that you, could, you do? <laughs> Usually my leopard print ones, they give me the most problems, right? <laughs> They're the highest, uh, so I really have to work around it. <laughs> yeah, but, so, uh, when I was a kid, this was back when uh, it wasn't politically incorrect. I don't know if it's even politically incorrect to do these days, but when I was a kid, like 10, 11, one of the more popular costumes for Halloween was to dress up like the opposite gender. Mm -hmm. So, you know, boys would dress up like girls, girls would dress up like boys. I don't know. I don't even know if that's accepted anymore, but I do remember putting on heels as part of my costume and I could not keep my balance whatsoever. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But anyway, when you're wearing heels, you know, it does throw your center of, of gravity off a little bit and you are going to place more stress on your knees because you're going to get more, your knees have to stabilize or your quads have to stabilize and, and, and be tight. Uh, to support your body. So you're using your your knees more than you would if your feet were flat. This is probably why you're feeling this. So how do you work on that? Well, the same way you work on any chronic knee pain, aside from not wearing heels anymore, which would be my first piece of advice. The second mm -hmm. piece of advice would be, okay, if you have to wear heels, focus on hip mobility and strength and ankle, especially ankle mobility and strength because your your, your foot's always in this flex position. Things get tight. And that can affect your gait quite a bit. Yeah, I would tell this person to make sure you go and, and you watch the the webinar that I did, the one where we get into ankle and hip more, right? So I would for sure watch the the um, the mindpumpwebinar.com and go to Maps Prime Pro, uh, the the movements that I teach in there. I think that's extreme. Now, aren't is isn't another problem too? Like when you're in heels, don't you? Or aren't you like in a locked out position too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, so it, it, like when you're when you're when we're kind of walking around, you have like a soft knee where when you're in a completely on your tippy toes, aren't you in a, a completely extended position? It's not. I just, mean, I haven't wear heels, so I don't know what it feels like. It's yeah, like, I'm, like, trying, I'm to trying to picture this right now. Yeah, I'm trying to picture it, and I and I envision someone with well, a almost a locked out knee. Well, think about it this way: um, you guys have done squats with your 
normal, you know, foot flat on the floor, right? Yeah. You ever done squats with your heels really elevated? Yeah, on your tippy toes. Yeah. Where do you feel it? Yeah. Quads. Yeah. Quads yeah. and big knees. Time. Like, big time. So it just throw it just changes the recruitment pattern so that you use a lot more quadriceps. And if you don't have good hip strength and stability, then that could cause problems uh, with your knee. And it may be coming from your IT band. Now, foam rolling can temporarily help, but again, if you don't strengthen the, the hips, then you're going to have to continue to foam roll all the time to prevent that. But temporary relief, try this. Try foam rolling your IT bands. Spend 15 minutes. like have a, Do a good session on your IT bands. Get up, put your heels back on, see how you feel. You'll probably feel some really, really good temporary relief. Of course, remember, it's not fixing the root cause of the problem, but it is a great way to take away the, the temporary pain that you may be getting from wearing heels. Next question is from Gabs is Rad. What are some ways to deal with relationship stress while quarantined with your partner? Oh, have mm-hmm. you guys seen the statistics on this? <laughs> I don't need to. I already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think feel everyone, this already. It's fine. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's, it's just a universal thing right now with with couples and relationships. It's this is that added element that like exterior element that you know has has sort of created even more tension. Oh yeah, I, you know, and it's funny. I don't think it's so much that you're just around each other all the time. This is what people are saying. Like, oh, we're around each other all the time. Therefore, you know, we're, we're having a lot more problems. I don't think it's as much. Uh, it's that much of that. I think it's more that there's a lot of stress and anxiety and fear that's happening right now. Because I could be locked. I could be in a hotel room with Jessica on a Hawaii vacation, be around each other all the time, and we're not getting in you know lots of fights. But you know, right now it's just a lot more stress that's going on. And so, how you handle yourself uh, under stress is really what 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 contributes to this. There's some self awareness that has to go around. Like, are you actually maybe being more of an asshole yourself. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. You can't control the other person. This is the most difficult thing. It's super easy when you're with someone and you're getting in arguments and you're getting on each other's nerves. It's super easy for you to look at them and say, that's what they're doing. They're in a bad mood. They're irritable. They're snapping at me. they're, They're criticizing me. And that all might be absolutely true, but because you can't control that, I think you're better off looking at yourself and saying, okay, how am I contributing to this? Am I less patient? Mm -hmm. Am I less kind? Am I being the one that maybe is taking things a little bit differently? We all have a, you know, we all have a a, a filter that we receive information through and that filter can make a comment seem negative or neutral, you know? Um, You know, let's say Adam and I are roommates and I have this negative filter about him and he calls me up and he's like, hey, um, hey, we're out of, we're out of bacon. And my negative filter might be like, this fucker, you know, he's telling me, I forgot the bacon. He's trying to remind me that I keep forgetting to buy the bacon. Now, if I have a neutral filter or a happy filter, I may just be thinking, oh, he's just telling me that we're out of bacon. Hey, just in case you go to the store. So that makes a really, really big difference. So I, I, this is true whether you're working with your partner or your business partner. Like you got to look at yourself and see how you're contributing because that doesn't mean that that doesn't diminish the fact that maybe your partner's doing certain things, but it's really the only thing you can control. Uh, I'm going to default to uh, the book Love Languages and being proactive. So this is actually in my notes right right now. So I better get on my ass and do this before this episode goes live or I'll look like a punk if Katrina listens to us first. Uh, And that is understanding that, you know, one of the things that happens with couples a lot of times when they get stressed out. Uh, in any situation is sometimes you feel like you're doing things that that should make that your partner happy or should make them feel loved but in reality you're doing the things that are like related to your love language and not hers or his and I have a, a habit of this you know I I know the things that you know I monetary things I like to buy things as as gifts to Katrina I mean I could uh, buy her a Range Rover and get a thank you. I could sit down and write her a card about how amazing she is to me, and she'll cry and share it with you know ten of her family members. So remembering that is so important. I have to remember that you know that that big action of what I think is love by buying her something that's cool or what I think is amazing isn't necessarily her love language. But taking the time to sit down and write her a card about how I feel about our relationship or how much I value her as a person goes so far. So, you know, I, I would urge whoever this is that's asking this question to dive into your partner's love language and what is it that that they, that makes them feel loved and feel good and be proactive about situations instead of allowing you to miss in that opportunity and then allowing outside stresses to cause stress on mm-hmm. your relationship. 
So think about that. Think about the things that make her or him loved and and that you know you can do. And many times, you know, at least in my experience, they they aren't massive things. They're little things. They're those little things that that show that you care. And that goes a long ways uh, when when you guys are dealing with so much stress. So that's in my own personal notes to be on top of that mm. today. So I, I think that makes a world of a difference. Yeah, totally. I could echo all those sentiments. Also, I think something that's really helped uh, Courtney and I at the end of the night, and I know some of these uh, other gurus out there will, will really promote this whole gratitude uh, journaling and, and just really like centering your mindset around uh, what is going well and what things you're grateful for and thankful for and things that are happening that, uh, you know, you can really focus your energy more on those things, which then help to kind of promote a more positive uh, environment around and uh, two, to close out your day so you don't have these running thoughts about, uh, you know, certain things that have irritated you about uh, the other person or like things in the way that just keeps spinning and spinning and it just it grows into something that's bigger than what it should have been. It's like closing that loop with something positive has really been helpful. I like that a lot because I think if you agree, especially if you're not fighting, right, you're like everybody's level-headed and you can say, okay, let's every night – Let's let's talk about what we're grateful for, regardless of what happens. I think that's good because it makes you feel more secure. I think one of the challenges sometimes when you're I don't care who you're dealing with, when you're having struggles, is are you do you feel totally secure with that person? Like if I argue with my my parents, I don't think in the back of my mind, like my parents are gonna disown me. I know they won't. Like I know I'm secure there. So we could focus on really the issue at hand. But if you argue with someone that you don't necessarily feel secure with, then it becomes not just uh, the situation at hand. It becomes like, oh my gosh, what does this mean about the rest of us? Uh, and so I think that gratitude, what you just said, Justin, I think that could be really, really effective. Next question is from She Beast Sarah. Are there any discussions or topics you guys have had that you each completely disagree on or can't come to a collective conclusion on? You know, we we used to disagree more at the beginning when we first started Mind Pump, but eventually I convinced everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We've all come around to yeah, become so Sal. Now we all agree. A lot of times the the disagreement, even back then, I think, because I, I remember I, I was probably the one who I tried to challenge Sal. There was a lot of times in this podcast early on where I, and I still kind of do this, probably not as much, that I, I will challenge, argue, or debate. And it's less that I just disagree with what you're saying. I'm always trying to think about what everybody else is thinking. Yeah, you're trying to voice other people's opinions out there. Yeah, it's also a great way to to, to learn and to really... Right. You know, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I want to hear you elaborate. I know that you're such a great communicator, and so you'll say things, and I know that I've trained hundreds of clients that I've had to go deeper on that subject or that have challenged that with me, and so I'll come out sometimes and challenge something that he's saying, not so much because I disagree, but because I know that there's a lot of people yeah. that are thinking in their head that they don't agree. And so I want I want him to explain deeper and us have more dialogue. Um, the only thing that I, we, we probably challenge each other the most on things that actually don't make the podcast that are more centered around the business. Like I think yeah, that, I, totally. I don't, we don't really disagree over fitness and nutrition stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if I you've think. been, if you've been doing fitness long enough, uh, like the three of us, you, you, you begin to kind of come to the, all the same conclusion. It's mm -hmm. what what we find with any of our peers, too. So, yeah. you know, when we link up with a Joe DeFranco or a Ben Pakulski or a Ben Greenfield, people that have been doing this for decades, uh, there's not a lot of stuff that we really disagree big time on. I mean, there, it's science, uh, application, and then, uh, you know, experience. And when you got all of that for that long, you all kind of sim come to the same conclusion. Now, maybe we have different strategies like there, there we definitely have uh when we talk a lot on the show you know the way we coach somebody maybe there's things that i focus more on justin focuses on something else sal does that are a little bit different but mm -hmm. i don't think it's uh, areas that we necessarily disagree no. with. and even even when it comes to the, the you know because this is something that um we all practice i think this is a very important practice as well it's very valuable because inevitably when you work with partners you're going to disagree at some point on something. It's just the way it is, okay? People are different, you're going to. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, when you decide to move forward, you all have to adopt it as if it was your own idea. This is very important. We've made business decisions that not all of us agreed on that didn't work out or that did work out or whatever. 
at the end of the day, if we're sitting here arguing or debating what's a better option and how should we invest this and what should we do here, and we all decide, okay, that's that's where we should go, we all accept it as our own idea. This is very important because it's not necessarily as important if the idea succeeds. It's not hard to adopt an idea that succeeds. That's really easy. Like, oh, you know, I know Justin came up with that idea, but I'm part of it. And now that it did, it crushed. Yay. You know, I, I'm yeah. glad we did it. Right. It's when an idea fails, which is going to happen too. Mm-hmm. If you're, I mean, if you're, look, if, if you swing your bat enough, you're going to, you're going to strike out and you're going to hit some home runs. So it's, it, very important that when we move forward or when anybody moves forward, if you move forward with your partner, that if they have an idea that they are totally for, you're not really sure about, but then they eventually convince you, now that you're moving forward, accept it. Because if it fails, that's when the partnerships get stressed. What you don't want to be is in a situation where an idea fails and then the your partner Everybody or whatever- piles on. Yeah. You. Oh, I knew yeah. it. I told you. Uh, that was supposed- Because what that, what is that going to do for the future? Well, that's going to prevent us from moving forward with strength and confidence and unity. It might either make you feel like you can't voice your ideas or it might make you feel like now you can't agree with the other person's ideas because they didn't agree with mine. Mm -hmm. So that's super, super important. So although we, and we do, we get in debates and stuff all the time. You're you're right, Adam. It's it's never on the podcast now because it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, what we would podcast about. But at the end of it, um, you know, I, I, I mean, if I, if we do something that I don't agree with, but we're doing it, I'm now it's my idea too. All right, yeah. let's do this. Usually, the only ones it's like we're speculating because, like you said, most of the things that we know really align well with everybody's backgrounds. Like everybody has, you know, different experiences training people and finding different nutrition ways to coach and and behaviors that they focus on. But as we all present them, it's it's funny how it all connects. It all all those dots align and then you get a deeper understanding of of what that truth looks like. Uh, so we're always trying to find that. So even if somebody brings up an idea, it's like, well, what are the other things to consider with that idea? You know, what are other angles there that I could kind of pick apart, but it's it's not really like a definitive like well no, no this is this is what it is because yeah. I, I don't know that uh, most of the time that we do have a different opinion it's that it's not fully formed. No, yet. no I think you have to. I mean, look, I'll tell, I'll speak for myself. I value uh, us succeeding, and I value our partnership more than I value being right. Oh, all of us yeah. on that page, right? So, uh, and that's. That's a great. That's a winning team. That is a mindset that will lead to success. If you value being right more than those things, you're screwed. There's no way you're going to possibly succeed. Well, it's really it's really hard for the three of us to 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 really disagree on something that we've each been doing for two decades. And and again, it's it's science related, right? It's just it's hard to have like a, a staunch difference of oh, I I yeah. totally disagree with what Sal thinks about this. And there there are that with the business because the business is so new, right? The business yeah. is ever evolving, there's and there's so many different avenues, right? That so a lot of times off air, what you don't get to hear is you know, us maybe arguing over like, no, I think we should put more of our focus here. No, I mm-hmm. think we should put more. And and the, and the reason why we argue and debate is because there's uncertainty because none of us can say, I built this media fitness company before. Yeah. And, and, and so it's it's speculation. Yeah. We we think that this will happen. And what's great about that is, is Sal hit it on the head is that, uh, you know, we all buy into whatever we agree on, no matter if it was something I was pushing against and saying, no, I disagree. Once we agree, I own it. And if it fails, I still own it. And it's not, see, Sal, you were wrong. It's like, you know, none of us knew. We were all speculating. The best way to find out is to uh, agree upon something, take action, move forward on it find out if it's going to fail or if it was the right decision. If it was the wrong decision, we move and we pivot the other direction. And the faster that we can come to agreement on that and accept that, the quicker that we can get yeah. to the right answer. And plus, you know, you, you, you want to embrace uh, disagreements as, so long as, you as, again, you have a healthy partnership because, look, uh, let's say you are very risky-minded. You are aggressive. You want to take lots of chances. Um, and you want to throw caution to the wind. Imagine if your partner was exactly the same way, right? We can we can think of the 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 risks being amplified. Well, what if you worked with a partner who was more cautious and conservative? Now you might have a little bit more balance. Now you might have a more balanced approach. So, I mean, if we were all exactly the same, if there were, you know, if my, if my three partners were all exactly like me or if, if they were all like Justin or Adam or Doug, you probably would not find uh, as much success. You would have less disagreement. You'd have no disagreement. 
but you'd find uh, less success. So um, you got to kind of embrace uh, embrace all of that. It's all part of the part of the game. And I also think it's hard. And this is why partnerships, whether you're talking about marriage uh, or business, usually fail. It requires everybody to understand that. It's very very difficult. Um, look, uh, we have a another. We are na- we are going to air another Prime webinar. I think this one's on the thirtieth, if I'm not mistaken, and this is the one where Justin is going to be teaching you how to do a self assessment. Okay, so he's going to take you through a self assessment. He's going to teach you how to prime your body. Go to mapsprimewebinar.com. Sign up if you if you show up when it's airing live. The, we will all be on there answering questions. Um, we'll actually be on video. You get to see us with our, with well, at least me, with my quarantine hair. So oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a real good time. So make sure you go and check that out. Also, I don't know if you know this, but all of our podcasts are recorded on video. Um, so you can, I know you like listening to us, uh, but watching us might be fun too. You can see uh, what we look like and the funny gestures we make. And sometimes uh, Justin wears funny hats. Yeah. Anyway, Go to YouTube. It's the Mind Pump Podcast page, um, and you'll see all of our podcasts uh, on video. And we also break them out, uh, break them down question by question. So if you just want to watch the answer to one question, you can do that only on YouTube. It's the Mind Pump Podcast.